Welcome to PR Talk, sponsored by the PRSA of Oregon and part of the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. This is your host, Amy Rosenberg, founder of Veracity and author of A Modern Guide to Public Relations. Help other people find our podcast by subscribing, rating, giving us a review, or sharing on social media. Hi, PR Talk team. So I'm doing an intro for this episode today because I thought I would give myself a birthday present by not having to make everything perfect. (laughs) Yes, but do you want to know whose birthday it is? It's PR Talks. This month is the six-year anniversary that we've been doing PR Talk. Crazy how time flies. But anyway, so you're sort of jumping into the middle of a conversation between myself and Kaylin Teagle. And Kaylin and I kind of tend to jabber on quite a bit. And so I lopped off the beginning part of the conversation to get right to the meat of it. But Kaylin came to work for for Veracity about a year ago as an assistant account executive and was quickly promoted to account executive earlier this year. So Kaylin and I are talking about a blog post Kaylin wrote called A Year Full of Lessons from an Entry-Level PR Pro. So first, we're talking about the writing tips that she discovered, and then we're going to move on into other stories and some funny examples Kaylin has about what she thought working in PR was like and then what it really is like. And you'll get an inside look at what you know she's learned in terms of timing on how we can use science to plan our days, because Kaylin and I are also really into hacking our days. Um, so I think everyone can get something out of this conversation, whether you're new or not. And just for the record, the other book I talk about in the end, besides Alyssa VT's In the Flow, is called When by Daniel Pink, The Scientific Secrets to Perfect Timing. I highly recommend this book if you're into timing out your day. Talk to you soon. And I was really, really, really like feeling good about it. And then I sent it off to the editor, Deb, which I love Deb. Um, mm. She, you know, returned it back to me. It was pretty much like, you need to rewrite this whole thing because oh my God, it, there were so, so many pieces. Yeah. And I remember... At first, I was like so upset. I was like, "It's like Mm -hmm. I'm. How did I like? Is it this bad?" Because I was just reading through it. I was like, "Does nothing make sense?" And it's funny because I really got upset because not because Deb corrected me. It was a matter of that I had gotten this far without somebody saying something like that. And I think Mm. it's funny because. You know, I had these internships, which I I learned a lot at all of my internships, and they helped me and corrected me on different things. But I, even in school, I just don't think that I was, I don't think people were looking at my writing hard enough and giving me the directions that I needed to really push myself to become a better writer. And so I think the big point here was that I learned that, you know, I'm not a good, I wasn't a great writer and not as good as I thought I was in the beginning because I had just skeeted by with my writing and people were allowing like little things to build up. And then when I came to this job, I was finally, you know, sitting down realizing, okay, Kaylin, you really need to sit down and write more. You need to take classes, you need to, you know, spend just time outside of work, just creative writing. And so that was such a big, you know, realization, just in getting having this job. And um, I'm so thankful for both you and Deb for like helping and, you know, I'm still getting edits, obviously, because I'm still learning and growing. But Whenever, yeah, just, yeah. So, okay, let's just talk about this. First of all, everybody, we don't mess around here. Like, <laughs> I mean, Deb is like the real deal. So first of all, Deb taught me how to write 20, like 20 years ago. Okay. And so I had the same experience with her. I mean, it and Kaylin, it was so bad that um, I, because Deb and I worked at my second ever job together. And okay, it was so bad that they weren't going to let me write press releases even. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I doing here then? I What the heck? I've always, because I always wanted to write too. And for some reason, I thought writing was a big deal. And I wanted to write. And if I'm just sitting around like pushing emails out and calling people, that's not 
what I, I'm not doing that. And so mm-hmm. they let, they allowed me to write if I took a class. Okay. And that, let's not, let's, per, no, the class was not all that helpful, but sure. I'm going to take a class. I went to it, whatever. <laughs> But Deb was amazing. And that that's how I learned how to write. And so I am glad that I told you before, like, oh, no, it's, it's your stuff will be ripped apart. And that's good. And we like that. Because that's how we learn. And that's how I learned. And she's just a good teacher. Um, but then the thing about this, I just want to be very clear is that you and other people are a good writer. You are a good writer. You have the chops, if that makes sense. You have a really, really good way of you pick good words and you can string them together nicely in a short sentence where we get into trouble with PR and press releases. I want to talk about that because you're saying you go to a press release with a blank ha- without feeling okay about it. It's because they're so structured. So when we mm-hmm. have a lot of changes and even on blogs too, I mean, we're, it's really more about the structure and where the words are in the sentence or in the paragraph or in the page. So we're, so it looks like a lot of changes and we're moving some things, but it's not, if that, I mean, it is, but it isn't. And so that's where the whole rewriting idea comes through. And then I just have to say that, by the way, I have had some, Oh my gosh, my cat. Okay. I'm, I can get very, very uh, passionate about this. Okay. I have had some clients say, I had a lot of changes, right? Okay. So I look at it. I'm like really worried. I'm driving. I see this email. I had a lot of changes. Oh my goodness. They had three changes. That's like nothing. If you have three changes, you are asleep. Okay. Right. I am not, we are not messing around. We like a lot of, I mean, no, I'm not going to give you, if let's say clients are listening to this. No, we are not going to give you something you have to change. Ideally. That is why we spend a lot of time editing here because A, we give a shit. B, we're just, we don't want our client to have to do that. And we're just, we are kind of in a writing way, old school professional. Um, And so I, I'm telling you, it is not a big deal for me. I mean, it's not ideal, but it is not a big deal in my life and the way I was raised in this industry to spend the same amount of time editing something that the writer took to write it. Now that is a problem on the writer's part. But, uh, you know, <laughs> but after, but after they learn and all this, it will get better. Right. So we right. only learn from editing. So sorry for that whole like <laughs> rant, which is what I do, but yeah. <laughs> anything else about, so you're just talking more generally, but you did have some good tips, but I don't think we should go through. I think people should just look at your blog post with your real tips. They definitely should. Yeah. <laughs> easy. Your tips are easy to follow. But mm-hmm. you, we're talking like beyond those tips. We're talking about like, yeah, like real writing and I think real editing. And I, yeah. I don't think a lot of people even in this industry have that uh, ex- experience. Meaning yeah. like not that they don't, they don't come to the table with experience. I mean, they don't ever ex- literally experience this as a verb. Like they don't go through what we're going through right now. Um. And because honestly, sorry, I, this is not my podcast, but just, it I mean, is. like, it's you're okay. being it's interviewed. Well, I, I mean, this is what we do. I, I, I ideally would be a mentor to you. And I just sometimes talk. Now, I have to say, one time when I worked in real estate, I was working under a woman who she, Kate, she was the top or is still the top realtor probably in the county, in Multnomah County. Now, she would come to everything like it was important. Does that, I don't know if you know what I mean, but like everything she did, she took seriously. Not that she was a stress case, but let's say she's going to a continuing ed class and she's taking notes. She's taking that seriously. I would go and be like, oh, this is stupid. I want to just talk to people the whole time and sit in the back. But I watched her take things seriously. And I thought, well, this might be the way to be because, you know, she was a top in the company. And so now I think, well... Okay, you might think that this press release is really dumb, and it might be, but I just, I'm not sitting around thinking that I'm going to waste time. So I'm going to take it seriously and when I'm editing it, and that's what I do. And it yeah. can be dangerous. It can be a waste of time, but that's that. I, you know, that's a different thing that I can work on. But anyway, um, 
What else do you have on your random kind of, so not writing, but your year full of lessons? Yeah. So um, I think another one was to follow my instincts, which is something that you tell me all the time. And you're always like, you have such good instincts or you're like, you, you make me feel really good whenever you say stuff like that. And so, uh, I think that was something that I learned. I mean, good. Wait, let me just say, (laughs) guess what? I don't say that to make you feel good in a way because guess what guys, Kaylin says stuff and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm almost rolling my eyes. Like it's so good. Like serious, like, cause you sometimes say that I'm like, Oh, and then it's like, Oh, okay. You, you are a PR person. It's not. <laughs> so this isn't like, you know, we can say, yes, you can read my book and like do the things, right. Like put one foot in the front of the other. Right. Right. But no, there some people just have a certain instinct or a spark that they, they can get this. And it, and there's a few ways that maybe it can come about. One is you're paying attention. I mean, that's pretty much first and foremost. So you're not only paying attention to what I've said, but also to what the client is saying. And so you have the wherewithal to do that. So you're paying attention and then you're connecting the two. You're connecting the client's needs with what I've said in the past about how to do this job. And then you're coming to me with new things. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. So anyway, sorry. So keep going. (laughs) <laughs> no, you're fine. I mean, but yeah, I think whenever I was coming into this job, I was, I, I think I talk about it in my blog as I was feeling like I had some imposter syndrome. And I think a lot of people my age, like going into their first real uh, job out of college, not real job. I mean, I had real jobs before, but you know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. I think they... I feel like we've all had that moment where we're like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Like, I'm just going to keep like, not that I didn't know what I was doing, but I also didn't like, I, I didn't feel confident in like my responses sometimes. And I felt maybe uh, that I was not getting something, but the way that you have taught me to like, just, if there's something that I feel that I don't know, ask the question. But if there's something that I feel I do know, then answer the question. Like, just do one or the other and don't think too hard on um, which one to do. I mean, just mm-hmm. kind of follow mm-hmm. into what you feel. And so, obviously, like you said, I, you know, I bring up ideas that kind of in my gut feel like the right thing to do. And one of the things about instincts too is, you know, if you or somebody above me has an idea that I don't agree with, I like learning how to kind of say, Hey, I I don't think that we should do this, but also having reason behind it. So not just saying, Oh, we're not, we shouldn't do that. And then like end of conversation, more like we shouldn't do that because in the past, like we've done blah, blah, blah. So I I don't know. I think following just my instincts and being more confident in my communication was another thing that was a really big lesson um, overall, just for growth in my position Mm -hmm. here and for growth in life. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And then um, the other thing I thought was interesting was you were talking about taking time with your responses, especially on email. And I think you it was just funny. You had a funny story to tell in that. I, I don't know if you want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I Whenever I started working here, I really... I just think it's funny because I started working here and I was like, oh, I have an email. And I like signed up for all of the uh, pretty much spam stuff that you're, mm-hmm. you're going to get anyway, eventually. I mean, but it's helpful stuff. So like there, you know, I signed up for newsletters and PR stuff and uh, to stay updated with like the news in Oregon because I don't live there. So I need to be kind of on top mm-hmm. of that. That's my job. Um, and So one, like, I remember signing up for all that stuff. And I remember anytime I got an email, I'd put it in, I would like open it immediately. And if it needed a Mm -hmm. response, I'd respond to it right away. Like I wouldn't, like I'd stop whatever I was doing and do that, which ideally is not smart, but 
I thought that that was the best way to do it because if I didn't respond to an email right then, then I'd forget about it. And, mm. and I remember like, I, I did, I do remember telling you this, but I don't know if you remember me telling you this, but I was mm. like, yeah, I'm going to respond to my emails as soon as possible. And uh, <laughs> you, were, you were like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And, but then as, as uh, time persisted and, you know, my workload got a little bit more than just training uh, and more people mm-hmm. were emailing me with thoughtful things that I needed to respond to. And, and they weren't just like, a, okay, yes, I'll do that. It was more of a, I have to bring my brain to the email. Um, I realize that that just doesn't work. And I think that that can go into any type of setting. So not just email. Like I think when we think about our responses and you've said this to me too, is to take time with your response. You know, you don't have mm-hmm. to always have the answers and you've done this. Like you've asked me questions before and then I immediately was like, yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. And you were like, wait, hold on. Let's just think about it. Like you don't have, I didn't need you. You didn't have to have the answer. I'm glad that you have it. But like, if you didn't have the answer, you needed time to think about it, to make it more thoughtful, then do it. And um, mm-hmm. I think, that's such a great thing that anybody can take with them wherever they are is that um, if it isn't an urgent matter in the moment, like somebody doesn't need an immediate answer, it's okay to take, take some time and make sure that your response is reflective of anything that would be relevant to the question. So if it's something like, Hey, should we move forward with sending this press release today? Oh, actually, next week is uh, a better time because uh, Mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. like there's a holiday going on and this connects better. So it's like, but if I was responding Mm -hmm. really fast, I'd be like, oh, yeah, let's let's throw it out this week. Whereas if I sat back and thought about my response, it would make more sense to, you know, send it out next week. And so, yeah, 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 sitting back and And, uh kind of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And I do like how you uh, earlier said that you like to have a reason when you're disagreeing with somebody. And I think that the reason helps because then the person on the other end can say, okay, like it's not, it's like, (laughs) it's like for me, it's like, oh, that's why I hired you because you can pay, you know, there's a holiday and I don't even know what month it is. So, okay. (laughs) Like, I don't know. Um, so anyway, um, so any tips for someone looking for their first job? And it, you could answer it in two ways. If it's, you know, a first job in PR, there's one way to think of it. Or just in general, they just got out of college looking for their first job. Any tips for them as well? Yeah, I mean, really, I this is a tip for even if you're in college. I think it's just so important to get those, like, go to an internship you know, whenever you're in college, instead of waiting until you're out of college, which I mean, I did that. And I I really appreciated having that experience whenever I graduated, is it did help, it did help people see that I had experience in PR, and that I kind of knew what I was doing. And I think that's probably what helped get this job. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I think getting that fundamental understanding in an actual place of work because in school you learn stuff but you're not really seeing it in action and I think Mm -hmm. you learn your the most whenever you're actually doing something Um, and so I think that's one of my tips another tip would just be to really whenever you're applying for whatever position it can be in PR it can be in whatever position you're in to really know your company that you're applying for. So I think when I say this, I say this like, because not everybody knows the culture of their company before they get into it. And I understand that. Um, But, you know, when I was applying for jobs before I got this one, I was going to the websites. I was reading about the, the owners and the leadership team. And I was looking at, the stuff that they've produced, their clients, all these different pieces. Because when I went into that interview, I wanted to make sure I was, I was mm-hmm. aware of what they wanted and what they were producing so that I could show 
how I would fit right into that. And um, there are some companies that do better than others. Obviously, Veracity does a really good job on having like a bunch of different pieces that can really explain what the company is, what you do. Um, and so whenever I was applying, that was easy. It was nice to like take notes and understand. And listening to your podcast too, I was like, oh, I love Amy. Like I think <laughs> I could definitely work with her. <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> yeah. And um, so I think just doing your research and, and then just continually like doing research, like never mm -hmm. stopping the process of learning. So whenever you graduate, yeah, okay, you get the job. We'll also take some time to continue to learn new things. Maybe you're working at an agency, but you're not really doing much with podcasts, but that's something that you would like to learn more about. Okay, go uh, take a podcasting class or um, go meet with people in your area, network, do those different things. So just continually growing yourself and becoming more of an asset to whatever you're doing. And um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's because, my tips. <laughs> yeah. And then that's can bring, that brings it back to the company that you're working for whenever, exactly. even if um, you're learning something not related to your job, there's always, if you're really into your job, you can always bring new learnings back to the job, even if it's, you know, seemingly not related. Um, right. So, you know, this, I don't know, um, you know, if we'll have time for, to, to run this, but we could always share it for, on another podcast. But the other day we were having a talk about new year's resolutions, well, which we hate, but then you, you, <laughs> and I can tell you why we hate them, but you had mentioned, I think you mentioned new year's goals and I thought, yeah. Oh, well, I should talk. What are your, what do you mean? Why, why do you have goals and not resolutions? And then what are your goals? Yeah. Well, I don't, I feel like saying having a goal is a lot more structured than having a resolution. I feel like a resolution comes, I don't know. I feel like the word itself makes you think that there's a problem and because mm. uh, problem resolution. And it's like, maybe mm -hmm. there isn't a problem. It's just, I need more growth or I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. feeling, filling filling the whole whole of me, I guess, I guess like making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So I, every year I do make goals. I, I try to make goals in different areas of my life. So I do my health goals, my personal goals, my finances, my work, my home and my relationships. So it's like, Oh, wow. You're organized. Goals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's another thing about PR. Um, but <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And um, so my goals really aren't too. The other thing about goals, too, is not making them so difficult I, or too intangible. Like whenever I set a goal, I make sure that the steps to get to that goal are easy to follow. So it's like I'm not going to just, you know, say, oh, I, I want to be 10 pounds lighter by the end of the year. Um, and then just be like, just exer exercise every day. Like it would be like, Oh, on Mondays, I'm going to do cardio Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this and mm -hmm. I'm going to do this for whatever amount of days. So same thing goes with work. So my, mm -hmm. my main goals in, in my work life is, uh, specifically for me is to one develop my writing more, which uh, I kind of look at it as monthly steps. So each month I want to, you know, do a couple pages of my own quote unquote blog, just me talking about stuff. And I would just create it myself or create something like a little creative writing piece, like a little story or something just mm -hmm. to get my, you know, my creative mm -hmm. juices flowing. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's, that's part of it, developing my writing. And then also um, another goal I have is to create a more organized workflow that goes 
with my energy levels. Mm. And, and yeah. <laughs> That's so interesting. I mean, of course, writing is interesting, but now you're talking a different language. A lot of people, a lot of people might be like, oh yeah, I want to write. No. Okay. So a lot of, <laughs> not as many people understand what you're saying. So what, are, what do you mean? Well, uh, I am reading the book um, In the Flow by, mm-hmm. is it Alyssa Vin- mm-hmm. Vitti? Yeah. I, and, I don't know. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, we can share it in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, you actually shared it with me. You told me about how um, women have a 28 day cycle that's a little bit, that follows a different circadian rhythm than um, what we're used to, what the 24 hour cycle follows. And um, I've been reading it and I really like the idea of, Doing things like uh, doing projects or anything in life where your energy is at. So if I have a lot of energy one week because this is that that time that I'm feeling energized and I'm feeling creative, I want to do things that add into that. So coming up with new projects or writing, different things that would be more like that. And then some weeks when I feel very intuitive, I want to just sit back and kind of not talk to so many people. That's when I do, you know, my admin work and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. I think kind of tuning into like how I feel and following that I guess, internal clock that I have, which, I mean, you had said something about um, not like waiting on your work, like with Mm -hmm. uh, having, um, taking your time with your responses, like you said, just Mm -hmm. like sitting back and not feeling like you have to do the work right now. And that's the same thing with writing, like how I said that sometimes I feel like whenever I'm about to write, I am stuck and I don't want to write. And then it makes me like not want to write. So instead of going in, those are probably times when my energy is really low and my creativity is really down. And so if I can find the times that my energy levels are the highest, then I can, Hey, Oh, Hey, I'm going to love writing this press release Mm -hmm. right now. I'm going to, this is the perfect time to do this. So Mm -hmm. I think just tuning into those different um, times will really help just my workflow and just my life flow better. Yeah. Okay. So you're just trying to get organized with that. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And then just to kind of clarify for everybody. So, um, and there's a lot to say about all this, but there's two rhythms. So men only men and non menstruating women follow the 24 hour circadian rhythm, Mm -hmm. but women follow two that women who are menstruating follow two rhythms, which is the 28 dial day cycle and the 24 hour. And so if you're looking just at the 24 hour, that's the only one I really knew about at first was that we are all a little different. We all, you know, no matter what your gender, <clears throat> you're designated at birth gender. Um, we're going to be different in our 24 hour cycle because some people are morning people. And that's true. Some people, there's actually four types of people. And so you want to pick what works for you for, for some of your harder work. So um, for me, it is writing. It's not hard for me to write, but I just, I, I, I do have more energy in the morning. So I'll do my writing in the morning. And then, and this is a different book I read about just the 24 hour cycles. And I'll put that in the show notes. Um, but they also say though, in general, mo- most thing most good things occur in the morning. So like you want to have a surgery in the morning because you want to make sure no matter what gender or cycle they're on, you need to make sure that they're fresh. So our brains are more fresh in the morning. So you book all your surgeries in the morning. You look to see that they're starting their shift at that time because their morning might be different than yours. Um, and then they do say morning meetings are the best too, because everybody's more fresh. We're not dragging. So whether you're Mm. presenting in the morning or you're listening. So like if you're presenting, you want to think about your own energy. Like if you're pitching a new business account, just in a meeting, you want to think about your own energy. Yes. But then you want to think about the energy of the receivers who is hearing you. So then their energy is also better in the morning. So for me, I'd much rather not talk to people in the morning because I'd like to write. But if I have a big business pitch, I'll I'll pitch them maybe at 10. 10 a.m. is the best time for 
like talking is 10 a.m. And then I kind of like what I call do bullshit work, which is important. And it's actually very kind of hard for me to do bullshit work, um, you know, admin work um, in the afternoon. I'll save it for afternoon. But the problem with that is then sometimes it doesn't get done because, but whatever. Um, so, <laughs> but that's just the first cycle. Now, let me just tell everybody, not that I'm an expert at this, but the second cycle for the 28 day is, um, again, it's ma- based on a, a woman's menstrual or, It's a woman's, whoever is menstruating, their menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. But those that are not menstruating that identify as women can also follow. Now I'm going to sound really woo woo. They can follow the moon, (laughs) that you can follow the moon cycle. Because think about it. Why is the moon 28 day cycle or whatever, 30 cycle? I don't know. So you can follow that. And I was glad to hear that because I mean, you know, let's just get real. I'm 45. So I found this great information like when I'm towards the end of, of actually being able to use it. And the great information is that, like Kaylin said, we have four cycles within the 28 day cycle. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, depending on where you are and it will tell you where you are and it will match your, this, this book in the flow. And also they have an app where you just track it and it will tell you exactly where you are in the cycle and it'll tell you what kind of work to do. So for me, who really is, a, I mean, I'm a life junkie because I like to read weird stuff like this, but I, I'm a work junkie, right? So for me, I'm like, oh my God, they're telling me what kind of work to do. I'm not going to pay attention to what to eat or what to exercise because <laughs> um, they have that there too, but I'm just like devouring the work section. Um, and it's saying what, like Kaylin was saying, okay, this is your maybe creative time. This is your time to go out and talk to people and pitch new businesses when you're networking and why it said, why it feels so hard sometimes to go out and socialize for people or, you know, menstruating, uh, people who, who are, you know, identified as women at birth. Yeah. Um, it's, It is hard because you're, you might just be on the wrong cycle. So, I mean, like you're not, you're never on the wrong, you might be doing at the wrong time based on your cycle. So, um, if you, you know what I'm saying? And so, so it's kind of confusing sometimes being a woman because you are thinking, well, I was really into this last week. Like I, I (laughs) felt on top of the world. I felt like going and meeting everybody. But this week, I just want to stay in my pajamas and like, you know, do my admin work. Well, that's not weird. That's actually how your body works. And so now that we know that we can actually really take advantage of it. And we are not tied to the 24 hour cycle we can do. So we can work in different creative ways and use time very creatively. Um, And so that's just really exciting. And I think I was going to say something. Oh, oh, I know. The other thing that's really interesting is this is so important that a lot of companies are following this. So especially women owned, women led, predominantly women companies are following this um, and not booking meetings at inopportune times, which is fascinating to me and revolutionary. So anywho, that's all I have on that. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, I agree, though, because if you think about how, like, we've been conditioned to kind of just follow this, this continuous cycle that doesn't truly fit, you know, our brains and how we work, it, it almost makes you, you know, question yourself, I feel like, you know, if I was feeling really great last week, and then this week, I'm not bringing it, but everybody else seems to be bringing it, I you know, beat myself up. And it's like, no, it's because I'm not meant to be doing that this week. Like this is, this is something else. So separating that feeling of, you know, why don't I feel the same way I did last week? Now that I know I'm like, oh, okay, that all makes sense. And I wish that more people would know so that we can all just Mm -hmm. work together on our, (laughs) on how we flow. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And it's just kind of, but at least we know it and we have a superpower now that we know right. it because we aren't <laughs> tied to the 24 hour cycle. And then one last t- thought about 24 hour cycle. Like, yeah, I get it. Like I, I do the kind of circadian rhythms and I know when I'm not at my best, but I have always been highly confused by happy hour culture. 
So I, a lot of people go to happy hour and I, I'm just so tired and I don't understand why they do it because I just, I'm just tired at five o'clock, you know? And I think that's also why they drink because they're too tired to do it, but they're just doing it. Right. Well, right. yes and no. Apparently the male cycle does have a up, it picks back up around, I want to say actually around three, I can't remember, but the, there's a, it's like a high and a low and it, it dips down a little bit in the afternoon mm-hmm. and then picks right back up maybe around happy hour, which is yeah. amazing. It's like insane that our culture follows that just out of tuition. And I'm not going to talk about like the patriarchy and all that, which, you know, (laughs) some people could and do, but I don't, I don't, it's just that we didn't really know this. And so women have been going to happy hour for years and maybe not feeling it and possibly over drinking because of that, because they're trying to get through it. And now we we can know. Oh, we don't have to do that. We could just suggest coffee, and that it, you know, if that's better for our, the way our brains work. And um, so it's just kind of exciting to dig into the science, right? And I think too, it's something that like we as moving forward, you know, into this year, like a goal that we could talk about how we can structure our days together um, to make it flow better for just us and that's that's one of you know my goals is to make sure that I'm more organized organized in my workflow okay good well um thank you for talking to me about that and good luck everybody on your new year's goals Thanks for listening. For more PR insight, be sure to check out Amy's book, A Modern Guide to Public Relations at prtalk.co. Also, please subscribe, rate, or leave us a review.